like to call this public hearing uh, on the proposed uh, 2022 budget. It's 6.04, and I guess I'm just going to turn it right over to you, Shelly. To... You got the floor. Do you want me to jump in, Darius, or do you have anything that you want to say before I get started? Oh, for those who don't know, Shelly Pareda, um, <laughs> who will go through our budget for us. Um, yeah, I think you know we'll walk. With, I think the setup for tonight's meeting is that Shelly will walk us through, give all the information to those who are here, our guests that are here as well, and then I believe Bobby will then open up the floor to questions. Um, so you know, I invited the select board and the finance committees um, directly with links here, and then there was no public comment or other people asking to join tonight's meeting through our normal means of communicating with Donna or myself or with the chair. So. Um, other um, select board and finance committee members may come. Um, we did have a chance to already visit Sunderland. So even though there are town administrators here, um, timing wise, we had to meet with them regarding their elementary budgets. We talked about the frontier budget at that time as well. So um, people are watching and wondering where their representation was. Um, and I do wanna thank the select board and finance committee. In the last few years, we have gone out to the towns and had conversations with them about each budget. The way the timing works this year is that the frontier budget has to be approved by the end of this month by state statute. Um, and with the town meetings, even with the town meetings being pushed off to June. So um, our elementary budgets, are, those public hearings are happening later, except Conway's. Conway's is happening this month. But the other three are happening in the month of April or um, early May. So we'll be announcing those coming up um, as well because so, we have more time and based at those budgets a lot of things have to do with reopening and enrollment size and that kind of stuff the additional time we kind of agreed in talking with the towns um use a little more using a little more time is was prudent in that time if we had it because we had it so um so anyway um tonight's meeting is for to go through the budget um and then it is the, the committee is scheduled to vote on the, the budget afterwards however if information comes up tonight where they don't the committee doesn't feel comfortable voting on the budget afterwards we always can schedule another meeting have Shelly and I go back and revisit any portion of the budget um you know if you don't feel comfortable approving it tonight so we do have we purposely gave ourselves a few weeks um because we don't like going right up to a deadline if something comes out in a public meeting I think we learned that a few years ago where we were in a tight spot so with that um Shelly if you wouldn't mind taking it from here Okay, I did share out with the school committee as well as with town administrators the narrative that we're going to discuss tonight as well as the complete budget workbook. Um, I think the primary plan is to go through the narrative unless there's specific questions um, line by line in the budget, but typically that's not how we've been presenting them. But I'm happy to take questions if anyone did look over that full spreadsheet and has them. Um, so the first steps that we took to creating this year's budget was to consider a level service approach. So we looked at existing um, staffing programs and services from fiscal year 21, and we replicated those over to FY22 as our starting point. Um, and then from there, we looked at any contractual obligations that we have, which uh, in the case of Frontier is for teachers and instructional assistants. Those are our two groups on contracts, um, which each have a 2% cost of living adjustment, and then also any step or column movement. If a teacher was changing from a bachelor's to a master's, for example, that's taken into consideration. Uh, and then anyone that is stepping to the next uh, step in the contract, that was also considered in here. Um, that amount equates to, for the general fund, about uh, just about 2%. It's just shy of 215,000 for raises for teachers and instructional assistants. Um, from there, we consider uh, increases for non-union personnel. So that includes support staff, um, secretaries, custodials, food service, um, as well as any administrators that are on an individual contract. Um, whether that's a negotiated amount already stated in a contract or a cost of living adjustment, all of those have been factored in here. Uh, we also take a snapshot of the historical um, non-salary accounts based on prior year spending. So I've looked at a three-year history uh, to adjust any non-salary expenditures up or down as needed. And then we added in a cost of living adjustment for operating related expenses, such as utilities and insurance. That was a three and a half percent increase that we built in. 
Um, and then we also obviously discuss with principal and other administrative staff um, what enrollment looks like and class sizes and determine if any additional staffing is necessary for the upcoming year. And then the final step of this process as we start to build our first draft and move on to second and third drafts is analyzing our revolving funds and our grants. Um, so for Frontier, we primarily look at school choice revenue, uh, school lunch revolving, and then our special education revolving accounts. So we wanna make sure that any expenditures that were paid from, from the prior year, from those revolving funds, that that can be continued to maintain. And if not, we make adjustments accordingly. Um, there were some other factors that contributed to the increase. Um, we did, after looking at staffing, realize that we needed to account for a 0.5 FTE world language teacher. So that is the only new hire considered in this um, current budget, uh, and it is a half-time position. Um, we also received our retirement assessment, which was $21,000 higher than the prior year. So that has been added in here. And then we had an increase of 20,000 total to miscellaneous expenses. Um, some examples of that include our legal fees went up for school um, committee members. So the what we pay for our retainer for legal counsel for any time that Darius or school committee needs to ask questions of legal counsel, that went up 2,000. Um, we added some miscellaneous stipends, uh, including the diversity um, coordinator for the diversity committee. Um, and then our hardware and software account expenses have gone up as well as building repairs. And those are primarily things related to um, COVID that we anticipate we're gonna need to continue in future years. For example, there's an additional 2,500 in um, building supplies and materials for um, increased cleaning products, hand sanitizer, things like that, that we've been paying with COVID relief funds this year. Um, but we do expect we're gonna need, need to maintain that higher level of product in certain accounts. Um, so those miscellaneous accounts here and there added up to about 20,000. So those are just the major factors on top of what I already discussed, the COLA um, being the primary increase. Um, and then those other adjustments for the insurances and utilities that I talked about in that first paragraph. Um, so our final increase, we're looking at 2.97%, uh, which is uh, about 341,000. Uh, total general fund budget of 11,807,459. Um, and then we also use other school choice funds, uh, revolving funds that I mentioned, the school lunch and the special education revolving and other grant funds um, to fully fund the school's operating budget, which is just shy of 13 million. The number is there. Um, Darius is sharing his screen. Um, so that's just a little summary of how we get to that number. Uh, and then from there, we take that final, those final figures and we look at um, what the assessment is. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these numbers here. I did share this out, like I said, um, but it's just showing you in that chart what each of the function codes from DESE are um, and what the changes have been historically over the past few years. Again, at the end of this, I'm happy to take if anyone has specific questions about those changes. Um, you know, again, as I said, there's no major staffing except for that 0.5 FTE. Um, so this is primarily, you know, any kind of inflation cost of living adjustments for um, salaries and wages, as well as our non-salary expenditures. Um, so we look at the assessment next, um, and this is never as simple as I'm going to explain it here of how the assessment comes out, particularly because the Chapter 70 formula is very complicated. Um, but ultimately, just to give any viewers or anyone else who's interested in learning how we build the assessment, um, so we take our total school operating budget and transportation needs. Um, we looked at what the state says that we're gonna get for chapter 70 funding. Um, and then we look at what the four town member town required contribution is according to the state, which is based on enrollment. Um, and then just as a, as a reminder to folks on here, or anyone who's not familiar with this, the state required contribution um, measures enrollment size, but then also takes a measurement of revenue for, that the city or town can afford. Um, that formula is really complicated. Um, it's easier to understand when we look at the enrollment numbers, but it's not simply based on enrollment. Um, so after we take those factors into consideration, we look at uh, any remaining budget that's left to be funded after those pieces. Uh, and that's how the assessment is calculated from there. And that's distributed amongst the four towns. Uh, based on an enrollment over a five-year span, uh, we take the cost share percentage from there and divvy up 
um, the balance. And then we also apply credits from excess and deficiency to keep the uh, assessment down. And then we do receive regional transportation reimbursement from the state. Um, so if we scroll down a little bit further. So if you look here uh, in this second line here for FY22, that 11.8 million, that is the budget. Uh, that I discussed previously at the 2.79% increase. You can see our chapter 70 aid, uh, the four town required contribution that is coming directly from the state. That is the total that needs to be contributed by our member towns to Frontier's budget. Um, we are expecting to see about 183 in regional transportation. Uh, we are using 200,000 of Frontier's excess and deficiency um, that was certified for FY21 to help reduce the assessment. So the remaining amount that gets divided up amongst our member towns is just over $3 million. Um, so how do we factor that? how that $3 million is broken up? We look at um, enrollment. Uh, this here, this chart gives you a breakdown of, of each town. So the required contribution by town, the operating um, amount by town, the transportation amount, and then the total assessment. Um, so you can see here, uh, Conway is looking at a 0.43% increase or $6,500. Deerfield, 4.32% increase or $171,000. Sunderland has the most significant increase this year at 14.01 or $242,000. And Waitley is actually going down, um, which is partially based on their enrollment decreasing. So they're looking at $64,000 less than the, than the year before in their assessment. Um, so just to give you some more information on how the uh, assessment is calculated, so the Chapter 70 formula, as I said, takes into consideration enrollment. Um, so it's pretty simple to see here that from FY21 to FY22, Conway is seeing a decrease in enrollment at Frontier by seven students, Deerfield 14. Sunderland is up 14, which is one of the most significant factors at why their increase is coming in so high, and Waitley is down 11. So overall, the district is looking at, from our four member towns, a decrease of 18 students compared to the prior year. Uh, the five-year rolling that we use to calculate the cost share percentage, um, so we are looking at years 2017 to 2021. Um, so the total numbers, uh, over those five years there, you can see is uh, 2,363 students. So we take each town's portion of that and divide it into the total um, to factor in the percentage of that 3 million. So of the 3 million 88,000 that is remaining to be funded by our four towns, Conway is going to pay 16.59% of that, Deerfield 49.56, Sunderland 22.58, and Waitley is 11%. Um, so if we scroll back up a little bit, Darius, do you mind going back um, two more? Yeah, to this one. Um, so if you look here at this, you know, Conway's assessment of 1.5 million um, correlates with that percentage that we just talked about down below. Um, and Deerfield's the same here. So Deerfield is paying the highest percentage because they have um, the most students and their assessment from the state required contributions is the highest. Um, if we if we go back down a little bit, Darius, to the next chart, um, I just wanted to give you the assessment history to look at. I think that this is important to point out because there you can see clearly in here there is fluctuation from town to town. Um, so while Sunderland, and, and from year to year, so Sunderland is seeing this really significant increase this year. Um, I think Deerfield is also probably higher than, than most years. You can also see that a few years back, Conway saw a significant increase. Um, so that could have been enrollment. It could have been because of um, town revenue increase, tax increases, those kind of things. Um, but it seems like every few years there is this fluctuation. And there, you know, it, it's hard to predict what the next year is going to be because you can see here clearly that there's not a lot of consistency year to year. All four of the towns are seeing pluses and minuses. Um, Darius, can you scroll down a little bit more so we can try to see? There we go. So we can see Waitley. Um, everybody's kind of all over the map. In some years, one town seems to benefit really well. And in other years, um, somebody else is higher and, and taking a larger chunk of that assessment. So I just wanted to show you this um, because I think there's a little bit of shock factor when you see some of the numbers and without some of that back history, 
um, I think you lose part of the story and how all of this is created. So I really just wanted to give you a snapshot here. Um, I know it's a lot of information and we didn't get into the details of the budget, but I am happy to take questions on any of this information. So if there's any finance people or select board out there that want to ask some questions, I'd like to have you guys go first if if you like. If you have questions, just raise your hand. I see Alan first. Sorry, George, there's not a lot of people. I could see a few of them, so. Don't sweat it, Bob. I saw Alan, too. Yeah. Just unmute yourself first, Alan. <clears throat> Control D. There Thank you, you. I learned something. Thank <laughs> you. It's always a faith in you. Thank you very much. So my question would be a total projected enrollment of students next year. Uh, maybe show you can have that number because we always get asked at town meeting, what's the average cost for a student to educate? So if we can have that number, please, that would be helpful for town meeting. That's it for me. Thank you. Yeah, um, I do have that number. So based on the foundation budget, um, the state says that our um, minimum spending per student is just shy of $12,000. Um, that's based on a $6.6 .6 million budget that the state says is our, our minimum amount that we need to spend. And we clearly spend significantly more than that. Um, so if I look at our entire budget, which is just shy of the 13 million, um, we are at about 19,000 per pupil. Now, one of the things I think is important to point out is that with the foundation budget and the chapter 70 formula, it only includes students from the four towns. It doesn't include students that come in from school choice. And while the state does give us money to offset those school choice expenditures, we're only seeing 5,000 per student unless it's a special education need. So if our overall cost is 19,000 and the state is only accounting for 560 of our 650 students, we're not getting enough to cover all of those additional students, which is why we have to use alternative funding sources and have our budget higher than what the state says. Um, so I know that, that was a long answer to your question, Alan, but I think it's good to get some history there. Yeah. So straightforward answer is um, with almost a $13 million total budget of all funding sources at 649 students, which includes our school choice, it's um, $19,692. Person. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, and I appreciate the three-year trend by town. I think that's really helpful. You're welcome. Another question: The projected decrease in enrollment of 18 is that the result of more student school choice, or just declining enrollment in general, or, is it, or a combination of both? I always get concerned when the student enrollment goes down. Uh, um, I, George and Darius probably could speak to this a little bit more than me, but I, I do know district wide, we have seen a decrease in enrollment this year, given the pandemic, there are people choosing to homeschool or, um, you know, they may have been school choice and stayed in their home district instead of choosing to frontier. Um, I don't have much more specific other than that. Um, frontier has had, um, historically, you know, so a, a few students here or there, um, plus or minus every year. Um, but I'm not sure if George or Darius has any further information they want to share about the decline in enrollment. Sure. So according to the October 1 report, which is the number the, the state asked, <clears throat> does the official enrollment for this year at our October 1 re report, and Alan, I'm just going to mute you if you don't mind, just because you're giving yeah, some feedback. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, if you do mind, you can't say anything because I just muted you. But the, um, <laughs> Uh, we are down six students from last year at the October 1 report. So it's not a huge fluctuation. So over the past three years, we went from 647 um, in 2018 to 655 in 2019 to 649 um, in 2020. So there is a big drop across the, if we, if we call ourselves a K pre-K to 12 district, um, because the elementary schools due to the pre-K and such had a larger in, in kindergarten where some families, a lot of a lot more families chose either not to send the child to school or not do, you know, this kind of learning uh, through the computer um, or look at other alternative means, you know, took the biggest hit. So 
overall, when we talk about in education in our district as a whole, there has been a greater loss. Um, but at Frontier, uh, an, an adjustment of six students, that's kind of normal depending on how many students will go to tech school in a given year, how many students coming up, we have that kind of range. So that's kind of a natural range. Um, and overall, if you look at the long-term thread, we were down to around 610 about um, you know, five or six years ago. So we're actually kind of building back up to the numbers we were we were around 710 when I started here 13 years ago. So we went way down to closer to 600. Now we've kind of floating in the middle and been consistent the last three years. Anybody else out there have a question? Roy, you have a question at all? No? Phil, how about you? Why would you pick on me? Well, you're you know, you're doing double duty. Uh, so you know, I'm I'm happy that we have people from Conway on board tonight. I don't see anybody from Waitley. I don't see anybody from Sunderland. Uh, but we already met with Sunderland, so but you know, there again, uh, I don't see anybody from Deerfield. But you know, yeah, yeah, I I, I think that uh that that for Conway it's a this is a, a really good budget so um I think probably the less I say the better <laughs> and Bob just let you know for those watching Casey Warren is on she's a town administrator from Deerfield just, just okay. so that people know people are watching like no Deerfield they're here sorry Casey uh, I will ask a question okay Roy. if I may um that 19,000 figure how does that compare with um, now? Okay, how does that compare with um, similar schools in Western or Western Central Mass? I don't even know if you can include Central Mass. Do we know? I don't have that information handy this evening. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, I tried, to, I tried to scramble at the same time to pull it up. It is a document on the Desi website where you can see the ranking of the schools. Um, it is, um, I don't want to comment on it without having it in front of me, but we're not at the high end of it. Um, but um, we're not, we're definitely not at the low end either. That seems, I mean, that seems like a good number. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll try to pull that up. If you can, feel free to talk about it. Whatever he was doing did not work. Roy, do you have anything else? Uh, no, but I saw Keith. Keith uh, had his hand up. Okay. He's for free. When I was gone by Amherst, is about 21,000, 22,000 per student. Okay, good to know. Very good to know. Thanks, Keith. Roy, can you mute yourself? To there you go. Thank you. If there's. Uh, if there's nobody else, um, I'm not sure if we need a. Um, we have to come out of the the um, the public hearing and then have a motion to vote on the budget. But I know if somebody wants to talk in the committee, as if to, after the motion, I would like to have any committee members want to speak. If no one else, then we'll do a second, and then we'll vote on the budget. Is that what we're going to do, Bill? Bob, just real quickly, I did just post in, it's a huge state report with all the districts in the state. So if you, I just posted it there. If someone really wants to curiously on their on their own, they can clip over to that. Amherst is an A, so it's right there in front. So Keith, the one information you gave us was right up front because it's an A, but if someone wants to go through and just kind of, where they're curious to where we land, um, I can't pull out Western Mass right now. So you're gonna have to go by names of places you want, but that information is all available. So thank you. Thanks. Bill, do you have anything to say as uh, chair of the budget subcommittee? No, I was fixing to make the motion to adapt the figures as presented by Shelley. So I have a motion and uh, do we have a second? I'll second. You have Mary with the hand up, Bob, before you, yep. I don't know if she wants to wait until the yep. discussion. Yep, now we'll have some discussion. Hi, Mary, go ahead. Hi. So I was just curious if we have any feedback from Deerfield. You know, perhaps you've had other conversations that they weighed in on this budget. No. Um, 
what's funny is I talk to the Deerfield Select Board all the time because they're also the Board of Health. So, you know, I was actually with Trevor today and, and talked with Carolyn last last Friday, um, but we had not really gone into any um, conversations regarding this. We did send them the copy of all this. So um, I did have a conversation with Trevor about the numbers at one point. Um, just kind of gave him, he wanted to know where the range was and where we were falling. So that conversation, but um, we have not gone. I invited them to this meeting. As you know, Casey was also on. I don't know if she still is on um, as well. So. Okay, thank you. Does any other committee members want to chime in and say anything before we vote? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we just, can before we get all excited about voting, can we just review the figures that we're voting on? I just want to hear them out loud. Like I have a number, I have two numbers from Shelley's narrative that she reviewed today. In the past, I know we voted on transportation as one and the other part. So, like, let's just get our ducks in a row. Please. Thank you, Judy. Sure. <laughs> I got to earn my keep. <laughs> so I can break it down for you. Um, we're, I believe we just are voting on the general fund because those revolving funds and grants fluctuate from time to time. Um, so we are voting on. Um, let me get the right number for you. Uh, transportation expense of four hundred and thirty-two thousand, uh, and remaining operating expenditures eleven million three hundred seventy-five thousand four hundred fifty-nine for a total budget of eleven million. 807,459. Yep. You got that, Miss Judy? I do. You want to do roll call? I do. Um, Bob Hallam? Yes. Lynn? She's saying yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Phil? Yes. Bill? Yes. Judy, yes. Mary? Yes. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. And Olivia? Yes. Great. Thank you, everybody. And I need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Bill. I have a second. Second. Bill? Okay, Judy. Everybody raised their hand. Good job. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Shelly, thank Good you night. so much. Thank Good you, Shelly.